Hey, good afternoon, everybody here with Dave Gregory again. Dave, you know, everyone's asking us about housing and uh, residential real estate in general. And so I just figured we might as well reach out to you, the expert on the space, and just let you rip on housing for a minute. Give us a perspective. What's your take on housing? It's in the news. One article is it's terrible. One article, it's really good. What's your take on it? Yeah, I think it's it's a confusing time, I think, for, for a lot of people. But, you know, our, our expectation is is pretty consistent with um, most Wall Street research at this point. There, there was a Goldman piece that came out, uh, I think, a couple of days ago that that basically, you know, expects home prices to decline, you know, five to 10 percent this year and then flatline for, for 2024. Um, in certain overheated markets, like like you know portions of the Southwest and the Pacific, Pacific Coast, um, you'll likely see bigger price drops there. And in some cases, you already have, um, you know. But overall, you know, our expectation is for home prices to be pretty sticky for for a couple of reasons. I mean, there, there are a lot of reasons, but I'll I'll touch on a couple. Um, one is really, you know, the lack of of housing production since the you know the 2008 crisis. Um, the second is is this this concept of a mortgage lock in effect that you're starting to hear about, which, um, you know, basically, if you've got a three, three and a half, four percent mortgage, you really don't want to give that up at this point. Um, the average mortgage rate in the U.S. right now is about three point seven five percent. And, uh, you know, if you if you look at if you were to go to get a mortgage right now, you know, mortgage rates are close to seven percent. Um, so that's just not something people people want to give up. So that really tamps down the supply in the market. Um, and then the other big thing is is mortgage underwriting standards. Um, so so this is something that I think doesn't get a lot of publicity, but you know it's relatively difficult to get a mortgage. Um, and you know back in the you know 2006 2007 period, everybody was pulling equity out of their house, um, and that really didn't happen this time around. Um, so, you know, overall borrower equity is, is really high right now. And, you know, having focused on, on residential mortgages for a long time, borrower equity is a huge driver of mortgage performance. And, you know, really, if you have, if there's a lot of equity in homes, that means mortgage defaults are, you know, pretty unlikely. And so that, that means that that distressed inventory really will never hit the market. Um, you know, so overall, we think, you know, a lot of people and news headlines kind of conflate, you know, what happened, you know, the recent home price appreciation, you know, over the past couple of years with what happened back in the mid 2000s. And again, that situation was way different back then. Anybody could get a mortgage. You had a huge CDO market that was gobbling up a trillion dollar subprime mortgage bond market. You know, if you look at where we are now, you know, the, the subprime market barely exists. It's it's called non-QM now, which is the new subprime, but it's a, it's a tiny fraction of, of what it was, you know, back in those days. Banks don't even want to be in the mortgage business. You saw the news with Wells Fargo getting out of, of one portion of their mortgage business. Yeah. Um, and so it's it's a much healthier environment overall. So, you know, I, I wouldn't bet on a massive amount of home price appreciation, you know, over the next few years. But where we are betting is that if you own a portfolio of residential mortgages, whether that's through a mortgage-backed security, you know, if you own a, if you own equity of a mortgage servicer or a mortgage REIT, but if it's some way, if you own a portfolio of of residential mortgages, we think there's a really high probability that you're going to get paid back on those mortgages. Mm, no, I like that. Well, let me put you on the spot and ask a quick question about that from a portfolio perspective for an investor. Would you say that this is a, a growth opportunity, a, a, a yield or income opportunity? How would you how would you consider think about investing in real estate in terms of your overall portfolio allocation, given the yeah, time I mean, so we're we, in right now? We look at the world as value investors. Mm. Um, and so we're not depending on you know, multiple expansion and, you know, for, for the growth part of the market to, to really rev up everything that we're buying, everything that we like tends to be at a discount to the sum of the parts, mm. you know, so if that's a mortgage read or a mortgage servicer, um, you know, some portions in the equity rate market, you know, we think 
we think this year is going to be hard for the growth part of the market because rates are going to stay high. It's going to press, you know, discount rates are going to be higher. So it's going to be hard for, for growthy type stocks to do well. We think this is a really good environment to focus on deep value and good yield. You know, so if you can get yield, a yield from, you know, call it five to 10%, um, you can own securities that are at a discount to the sum of their parts. We think that's, you know, that's the way to, to be positioned for 2023. Ah, great. That's a great wrap up right there. Well, Dave, yeah. thanks again. Pretty good commentary. Really appreciate your insights on this. Thanks, John. Uh, thanks as always for being available. If anybody has any questions, reach out to me or to Dave. You know how to find us. Thanks again, my friend. We'll have a great day. We'll talk to you soon. See you later.